Hi guys, it's Kamil here and I'm here to review a Yuli Sess of 2019, Dax Newberry Report by Lucy Elman, shortlisted for Man Booker Prize 2019. A book consisting of a single running through 1000 pages sentence of various internal monologues by a housewife in her 40s, a mother of four who runs a bakery out of her house that is located in suburbs of Ohio. Before Dax Newberry Report blew up, mostly due to Booker Longlist, I had never come across Lucy Elman. Looking on the bright side, it gives one hopes that even though one reads quite a lot, there are still great writers one might not even hear about, right? We'll stick to that. <laughs> Lucy Elman is not a new name. She won Guardian Prize in 19. 88 for her first novel Sweet Desserts, while her other novel Dot in the Universe from 2004 was longlisted to Orange Prize for Fiction. To justify myself, I need to say that I was too young to notice the first note and too into writing bad poetry at university to notice the second one. Dax Newberry Report, published this year, came out six years after her last novel, Mimi. I think I've said it in my last video, or the one before the last one, the one when I was reviewing 10 minutes 38 seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak, that I'm very interested in researching the writer to understand the writer's mindset, a background, you know, to have another angle to interpret the novel. Elman is the daughter of Richard Elman, who was an academic, literary critic and a biographer. He was a biographer of Joyce, Yeats and Wilde. He won in 1959 a National Book Award for Nonfiction for his James Joyce biography, which is probably one of the most acclaimed literary biographies of the 20th century. Lucy Elman's mother, was also a literary critic. Mary Elman uh, wrote, among others, for New York Review of Books. She is most well known, though, for her essays collection, Thinking About Woman, from 1968, a very important work of early feminism. I believe that in this essay collection, she addresses the evolution of the representation of femininity in British and American literature. I have not read it. I just read about it. Dax Newberry Report is not an autobiography, obviously, but it has quite a bit of autobiographical elements. A narrator's late mother, one of the most important private motives in the novel, passed away when the narrator was in her 30s. And similarly, Lucy Elman's mother, Mary, passed when Lucy Elman was 33, 34. And in the novel, the fact that mommy passed on when I was in my 30s, 12 years ago now. All in all, there are quite frequent references to Lucy Elman's father and mother in the novel. The narrator's parents seem to be based on them. Okay, but what is the novel about? And what do I think about it? When I started reading it, I was thinking that if somebody from a different planet wanted to find out about the state of the human society in the Western world, he probably would find out more from this novel than reading any other sociological study. But then it became more serious than that. This is a supposedly random stream of consciousness by a housewife in Ohio. However, this is above all a brilliant testimony of America, its origins, its often dark history and its current affairs still affected by that dark history. Let me read you one passage. The fact that Stacy is doing an essay on Dorothy's count. Stacy is narrator's daughter. The fact that Stacy is the same age as Dorothy Counts was when she had to walk to school all alone and she did it day after day and got jeered at and spat at and everything. The fact that Bobby Kennedy was invited to accompany her but he refused. The fact that they threw stones at her too, just a young girl like Stacy. 
The fact that her family in the end had to move to Philadelphia because it was just impossible in North Carolina. The fact that James Baldwin said freedom's a myth white Americans tell themselves. The fact that I'm sure the settlers meant well, or some did anyway, land grab, grab them by the... Broken treaties, gold diggers, and things are much better now, apart from when the police shoot black people. The narrator in her spree of thoughts would talk about Indian massacres, slavery, racism, misogyny, rape culture, porn culture, morning beauty routines, gun control, the lack of it actually. She would go from a music to catastrophic in the matter of a page. Ronnie is a Trump supporter that frequently visits the narrator. He helps her deliver the cakes. She has a bakery, right? The fact that he's really hoping Trump will make into England for a state visit. The fact that for some reason this is important to him, to Ronnie. I don't know about Trump. The fact that Ronnie seems to have a thing for Queen. The fact that once when I mentioned that I lived in London for a year as a kid, he asked me if you can get there by a car from here. And if Paris and London are the same city, the fact that then he wanted to know if they shared the Queen. I see London, I see France. Which sounds a very economical idea. The fact that then, weirdly, he started wondering out loud if the Queen eats stews or if they're beneath her, and then to catastrophic. The fact that I don't know if that's his hunting rifle or some other thing he likes to have in the car. The fact that how frightened does a guy have to be to keep a gun right out in plain view like that. The fact is that this is a guy who doesn't even know that London and Paris are two different places, yet he's in charge of those lethal weapons, legal lethal, in charge of life and death in Tuscarawas and all neighboring counties. She would talk about porn culture, Trump, a lot of Trump. You notice already, grab him by the, you know, the part I read earlier. This is in essence a testimony of what it means to live in America and in some aspects, you know, that, like ecology, porn, beauty culture, more broadly, what it means to live in the Western society in current day and age. You might now ask yourself, is it 1000 pages of this seemingly plotless, scattered meditation of life in the USA? with no order, system, no organization. But don't be misled by that. Don't be misled by what I've read. This book is very thoughtfully constructed. It's constructed to mimic the stream of consciousness in a busy, chaotic, kid herding world of a mother that is still working to make a living. The thinking of the narrator might seem like it's all over the place, but nothing is random here. Elman the writer is extremely skillful in her delivery and I believe there's so much to discover here. There are brilliant references, contextuality, things that overlap and add to the meaning of each other. This is brilliant. On the surface there is a private life of the narrator and her family. There is the social situation in the USA that is just as important as the private life. And there's a subplot intertwined with the narrator's life and her family. The subplot is a story of a lioness in search of her stolen caps. Her story is brilliantly interconnected with the life of the narrator. Uh, the roads often come very close, but are never crossed. The life of one is reflected in the life of the other and at the end when the seemingly lost child Stacy reconnects with the narrator after the traumatic experience in a similar moment the lioness finds her caps. At the beginning the lioness parts appear every 100 pages or so and when the novel progresses and lioness is closer to the area where the narrator lives and their experiences seem to resemble each other, be it due to the flood in the area or the lost cup, or both, you know, come closer to each other. Vicinity-wise, for example, when Lioness attempts an unsuccessful attack on the narrator's chicken coop, 
the chapters describing the lioness life appear more often and then the almost every 20 pages or so. Now, Dax Newberry report derives its title from the experience of narrator's mother who lived in Newberry Port. And while there, when she was two, she jumped in a duck pond, seeing ducks and screaming ducky ducky. She was saved by her older sister, Abby. You know, ducks in the book represent all that is passive, compliant, it stands as a symbol of our ducking away from the responsibilities we face in the modern day. Some fragments about ducks. 5,000 ducks being herded along a street in China somewhere on YouTube. The fact that they were so compliant and so identical. Poor ducks. TV really is just for sick people who can't do much else, trapped people, shut-ins, convicts, slaves. And then how TV is connected with DAX. Canals, channels, TV channels, MSM, DAX, sitting DAX, ducking out of things, the fact that in Texas it's now easier to get into government building if you carry a gun than if you don't. Lucy Elman seems to be saying that we are all living in a big duck pond, waiting to be saved while we are ducking away from things, watching porn, TV, morning beauty routines, carrying guns while there's ecological catastrophe creeping. Black people are continuously being killed on the streets of the USA. Women are being raped and Trump is being elected. Will it win the Booker Prize? Probably not. I believe it's too ambitious and probably not accessible enough, mostly due to its length. But in my opinion, this is a book that is the book of the year, if not the book of the decade. You know, T.S. Eliot once said about the Ulysses, I hold this book to be the most important expression which the present age has found. It is a book to which we are all in debt and from which none of us can escape. Similarly so here. This is a genius expression of the present age. There were voices saying that this book might not age well because it's too current. And once again, Eliot about Ulysses. The next generation is responsible for its own soul. A man of genius is responsible to his peers not to a studio full of uneducated and, and undisciplined coxcombs. <laughs> At the end, Ulysses aged brilliantly and I believe Dax Uber Report will do just fine. Okay guys, please let me know what you thought of it, if you read it, or if you are planning on reading it. And yes, what is your book of the year? I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. But there are cruel things. Shark fins, shark fin soup, the fact that a white lynch mob killed a black man for no reason, no reason. And when his eight months pregnant wife objected, they strung her up by her feet and burned her alive. The fact that she went into premature labor and they ripped her stomach open with a knife and threw the baby on the ground and they let that poor little baby cry twice before they stamped on its skull. The fact that this is America, the country I grew up in, the country Trump calls great, I pledge alliance to the United States of America. The fact that I try never to think about that story, never, that baby, or you just want to die. That brave woman and her helpless baby, sweet Fanny Adams, Bravik, Isis guy smiling while they beheaded a child. A child, nicey swinging babies against walls. Those guys in Texas who tied a black man to their pickup and drove for miles until until all the terrible, terrible things. Yeah.